back then with another in-game guide for Last Epoch. Today we will look at the Rune Master. This was probably the strongest mastery in patch 0.9.2 and a lot of people were expecting to see some major nerfs for version 1.0. It's still actually incredibly strong. The build that we're going to show off today that you can see on screen, this is a Frostbite Rune Master. We're using Frostclaw as our main spender. With this particular setup we can go over 10,000 ward, so we have a ton of survivability we can face tank bosses and we can also get over 1000 stacks of frostbite as well so we're putting out a whole heap of damage now before we do go in and we start breaking it all down if this video is helpful please do take the time to like share and subscribe button but let's dive in let's start breaking this build down We'll start off here then with a quick breakdown of some of the important mechanics of the build. So your main skill that you're using, this is Frost Claw. You can see we've got a lot going on with this. It is actually proccing Ice Barrage and also Elemental Nova as well. Up the top there, you can see already we're up to 800 stacks on this particular target and dummy. In the right instance, I've been able to get up to 999 stacks. It just shows a plus symbol when you get any higher than that. Your ward, you can see on the left hand side, currently we're at 5,000, close to 6,000 ward. When you're going up against multiple enemies, that will go higher. And in the gameplay footage we've included, you'll see the Zod instance where I actually break 10,000 ward. Mana on the right hand side, you will see this is running down really pretty quick. But as quick as it goes down, it actually goes back up again. And the whole time I've been talking here, I've actually been holding down the right click button. So we've been able to spam our Ice Barrage, our Frost Claw and our Elemental Nova this entire time. One thing that's really important for survivability with this build is your invocation. It's Ruins Frost Guard. So this gives you a 30% less damage taking shield. We're able to get 100% uptime on this as well. So what we would do is we would have Runic Invocation set up on Autocast. The actual cooldown of this, you can see it's 9.1 seconds. Whereas if we cast this again, you'll see that the shield here lasts for 10 seconds. So you get your 100% uptime on that. The way we get this so we can cast it so easy is you want to have a setup of runic invocation that we're going to show once we get to the skill section. But on your skill bar, you must have it set up so that it's ice, fire, and then ice. This fire one we have is flame ward. We don't actually have this as a specialized skill, but you can have it on autocast as well for a little bit of extra ward. But the important part is that you have fire here because you can see we're holding down a nice skill, but it still gives us the ice, fire, ice combination. Looking at two pieces of gear very quickly that are relevant, you've got Frostbite Shackles. The important part here is a 1% ward retention per uncapped cold resistance. We want to really go hard on cold resistance with this build. You can see I currently have 250% and in total I have 691% ward retention. That's what allows us to get the crazy numbers with it. We also have the snowdrift boots. With these particular boots you can see 2% cold penetration with frostbite per 10% freeze rate multiplier. A freeze rate multiplier is 1300% which means frostbite gets 260% penetration for the damage it does damage numbers and frostbite just go through the roof with this now that is a quick overview of this setup so let's go in now and we'll start breaking down the gear that we're using When we run over the gear then we will use the awesome Last Epoch tools. Now the gear that I will show off, this is the perfect gear that you are aiming for. It's not my live setup that I'm running. The live setup I'm running is actually pretty close to this, but it makes more sense to show you exactly the fixes that you want to go for. Now starting off on the helmet slot, we have Rune Visage. We have the Implicits, they work out nice. Mana spent gained as health for constantly spending mana on this setup via our Ice Barrage and our Elemental Nova. In regards to your modifiers, you've got increased cold damage over time. For an Exalted modifier, and I would add one Exalted per gear piece, you would want chance to apply Frostbite and Cold Hit. You have Physical Resistance and you have Void Resistance as well. 
For the amulet slot here we have the sapphire amulet, this is perfect, it gives us freeze rate multiplier and cold resistance as the implicits. For the modifiers you're looking at, freeze rate multiplier and cold resistance. We have exalted increased elemental damage over time, chance to apply frailty, you'll easily apply free stacks with this and that's an 18% damage reduction and then chance to shred armor on hit and that will be converted to frostbite which really helps with your frostbite stacks. When it comes to your main hand, this is the most important part of the build here. So with this, what you're looking for is a scepter that has tier 7 increased spell damage and reduced mana cost. That means it will give you minus 5 spell mana cost. And with the setup we're running, that means that Frostclaw won't cost any mana to actually cast at all, which is amazing. This actual unique you're seeing at the moment, this actually is the live unique that I got in game. I managed to get tier seven on this and it is incredible, but a regular scepter will work. But this is ideally what you're looking for. You've got the implicits, which is spell cold damage. You've got freeze rate multiplier. The modifiers are increased cold damage, plus one spell cold damage per five character levels. You've got 2% freeze rate multiplier per character level, so that's 200% at max level. 1% necrotic resistance, so that goes up to 100% at max level, and then 15% chance to cast Tundra Nova and hit with cold skills. So this is amazing, but once again I'll just say any scepter with tier 7 reduced spell cost will work here. For the body armor we have Tyrant Regalia, the implicits are increased cast speed, spell damage and armor. Modifier wise our exalted one would be chance to apply frostbite and cold hit up to 210%. We've got intelligence there that helps with our ward retention and also scales the damage of frostbite from the frost claw skill. We have cold resistance that is great in this setup because that's being converted to ward retention and then we've also got the reduced bonus damage taken from critical strikes. Opulent focus is the catalyst we would use. This gives us intelligence, ward per second and ward retention. Modifiers are exalted, increased damage over time, increased cast speed, elemental resistance and then your cold resistance as well. We have Spider Silk Sash for the belt, so the implicits here, the reason we're choosing this is the cold resistance because once again that is converted to ward retention for us once we hit the cap of 75 and we can easily hit this with this setup. Modifier wise we have tier 7 increased elemental damage over time, increased cold damage, we have reduced bonus damage taken from critical strikes so with the setup we're running we have over 100% on that and then we have your hybrid health as well there. For the rings, I would run two coral rings just so we get a bit more health. So modifier wise, we've got freeze rate multiplier and cold resistance. We have exalted increased elemental damage over time. We have flat health and then we have void resistance. Our second ring here, once again, another coral ring. Modifiers are increased damage over time, increased elemental damage over time. We want exalted on this, flat health and then cold resistance. We have our second unique here, this is perfect for our build, it's Frostbite Shackles. You really want to get chance to shred armor on hit in this particular one. I've not managed to get it myself, but this will be converted to your Frostbite chance, so this is ideally what you're looking for. On the base modifiers of this, you already have your chance to apply Frostbite. You've got your increased Frostbite duration, you've got your freeze rate multiplier, you've got your ward gained on freeze, and then you've got 1% ward retention per 1% uncapped cold resistance and that's why in so many slots we're trying to get our cold resistance as high as we can and with this setup if you look under resistances on the left hand side you can see it's run about 334 we have at the moment. The final unique we have here is Snowdrift. These are really important for this setup. There's two modifiers that are relevant to us. It's actually the top two. So you've got chance to apply frostbite on hit, that's great. And then the second one, 2% cold penetration with frostbite per 10% freeze rate multiplier. With this setup I'm running around about 1500% or so freeze rate multiplier which is great for freezing enemies but it means frostbite does a ton more damage as well. For your legend effects you could add on to this I would keep an eye out for increased movement speed otherwise you might feel a little bit slow with this setup. The final gear piece before we look at the blessings here, this is the Elder Eye Relic. The implicits are perfect. We have increased cold damage, chance to chill and freeze rate multiplier. Modifier wise you would really want the tier 7 
plus four to the level of frost claw because there's so many good nodes in the frost claw ability if you don't have this you will be missing out also gives you increased spell damage as well the other modifiers i would say keeping out for would be increased cast speed because the faster you're casting the more dots you're applying flat health and then also some endurance as well Starting off the blessings here, we have the Black Sun, and we would go for that spell damage leech this health. We have End in the Storm, you want increased cold damage for this one. We have Reign of Dragons, with the particular setup I'm running, I go for the plus 20% to all resistances. We have the Age of Winter, that gives you your frostbite chance, so that is perfect. And then finally, I've got Spirits of Fire. There's none that really suit here, and because we're a ward build, endurance isn't as important but I do still like to get it in my kit so I would go for endurance for this particular one. For the idols I would have two grand idols and the modifiers would be the same on the two that you can see equipped here but the modifiers are increased frostbite duration and increased cold damage over time. I would have two of the adorned idol once again the modifiers are the same. We've got chance to apply frostbite on hit because up to a pretty nice 57% as well as cold resistance and once again that will be converted to ward retention. You would want to use the throne of ambition because this will give you your 2% more cold damage per stack of ambition. It goes up to 20 stacks when you're fighting a boss this will really up the damage on your frostbite and then we've got a few gaps here so I would go for increased damage over time and physical resistance and actually the same one here as well. For this section here then you will find the passive point allocation in the link in the description and you can see you can actually go through it here to see the order that I allocate the points. So for that reason we'll just concentrate on the nodes I've went for rather than the point allocation. We have 8 points going into Arcanus that gives us additional intelligence as well as fire and lightning resistance. We have 1 point into Elementalist, 1 point into Reactive Ward, that allows us 5 points into Warden which is an additional 50% ward retention so that's great. And then we have 5 points into Mage Flurry that's given us additional cast speed which is really important for this setup. For the Sorcerer Tree, you want to put a minimum of 15 points into this so you can unlock Ice Barrage. We have 5 points into Arcane Momentum, that will give you additional cast speed up to 25%, so that's great. We have 8 points into Calculated Destruction, that's giving you additional intelligence. The 5 point bonus we're not really going for, it's more the intelligence that will scale our Frostbite, our Cold Damage and also our Ward Retention as well. And then finally I've put points into Cryomancer as well, that gives you increased Cold Damage and also Freeze Rate Multiplier. With the Rune Master tree here we start off with Sphere of Protection. It's additional health and the important part is the less damage taken from chilled enemies. Enemies should constantly be chilled with this setup. We have 2 points into Circle of Elements which then allows us 10 points into Freezing Point. That's increased damage over time, it's up to 70%. The 7 point bonus is vital for this setup. Your Armor Shred chance is converted to Frostbite chance for cold spells and this is really the, the primary factor that allows us to get over the 999 stacks that you can actually see. Up the top here we have Unsealed Mana, it's increased cast speed, it's got a nice 5 point bonus as well. Whenever you directly use 3 skills in a row that cost 0 mana and that will apply to Frostclaw with this setup, you gain a burst of mana and ward as well. We have 8 points into Arcane Focus, gives us intelligence, that's really important, as well as ward gain on direct spell cast. We have 8 points into Transcendence, that's a decent amount of health, 96 health, and we also get the 6 point bonus here because we are stacking Intelligence where we can get it, so that's a passive 36 ward per second we get as well. We have Mental Catalyst, so this one here, Intelligence with a Catalyst and reduced bonus damage from crits with a Catalyst as well, up to 48%. Edict of the Scion is fantastic, it increases the area for area skills, that's Frost Claw and your Nova, and you also gain ward per rune on area skill use, so that's 24 ward every time you cast Frost Claw, and we're casting it exceptionally quick. We have 6 points into Inscribed Instruments, this particular one, because we are using a Scepter, it gives you 72 ward retention, which is really a decent amount. And then we have 8 points into Decree of the Burning Wind. This one gives us more damage to bosses and rares and the effect is doubled if you have a Ra rune and we should have that available most of the time as well. 
Finishing up the passive tree here, the remaining points we have got into the Spellblade tree. So this is increased elemental damage and elemental resistance. Of course, the elemental resistance is great because that will include cold and that is increasing your ward retention. The first skill we look at here then is Frost Claw, and as mentioned when we talked about the gear section, the setup you have here, this will cost zero mana, but you must follow this exact setup. We have three points into Gift of Winter, reduces the mana cost by six, and it gives us a chance to gain 12 mana on cast. We have one point into Fen of the Frozen, this allows us to put two points into Bright Frost, that increases the cast speed and it gives Ailment Cleanse on cast as well which is pretty amazing. We have one point into Hand of Mordetus, this gives us extra projectiles, it increases the mana cost as well. We have Volley of Glass, this is really important, this is what allows you to hit multiple times rather than just one and that's why you can apply so many stacks of Frostbite. Now if we move over here for this tree we have one point into Rending Cascade, it gives us freeze rate multiplier which is nice but we're really putting the point in there so we can get Frozen Rain which reduces our mana cost further, gives extra damage to frozen enemies as well. Moving down here we have Shiver Shell so this one gives us retaliation chance and ward gained on cast, 8 ward is decent. We have Rowan's Veil, this particular one, ward per 40% freeze rate multiplier is one. Previously it used to be per 20% freeze rate multiplier, was pretty broken when it was that much so it's in a, a much better place and it is definitely worth one point. Some other points we have here, we've got Kolheim Ballista, this particular one, Ice Barrage Rate of Fire on hit, and it also means your Ice Barrage, when it hits multiple times, the Rate of Fire can go up by a whopping 80%. And we also have Power Word Hail, so you have a chance to cast Ice Barrage in the target direction when you cast Frost Claw. And it's a 5% chance, any higher than that you'll be casting it too often, and you will run into mana issues. We have 5 points into Artor Scepter, this gives us additional damage and a 100% Frostbite chance, so that's great. 1 point into Frost Beyond Time for increased ailment duration, and then 3 points into Celestial Conflux. So this one you have a chance to cast Elemental Nova when you cast your Frost Claw skill. So basically from your Frost Claw you'll be getting, if we go down here, you'll be getting your Ice Barrage, and you'll be getting your Elemental Novas just from casting that one skill. For Elemental Nova then we have a pretty simple setup here, we've got 5 points into Arcana, this gives us 40% more damage and 40% increased area. 1 point into Ice Nova, so this means whenever we cast this it will just be the ice portion of it. 4 points into Glacial Might, this increases the damage by 72%, it ups the mana on this but we can still sustain it. We have Freezing Cascade, so if this Elemental Nova casts Freezing Cascade on hit, creates a cascade of freezing novas that chain between enemies, that's a 100% chance on a 5 second cooldown. We have Protective Strikes, so Elemental Nova hits have a chance to gain ward, and then we have Magical Barrier, this one, the Protective Strikes and Survival of the Victor nodes on this tree grant more ward. So that is Elemental Nova, simple setup, let's look at the next skill. The next skill is Runic Invocation, this is what allows us to run the setup where we have the 30% damage reduction shield with 100% uptime on it as well. So we've got Attuned Approach, this gives us some ward and mana back whenever we cast an invocation. We have 3 points into Inscribed Patterns, 3 points into Word of Hera, and then if we move down here, and this is the most important one and you would actually make a beeline for this, you've got Offer of Arcana. It then leads into Immutable Order, so with that, that's how you can run on your skill bar the Ice Fire Ice setup, and even though you're casting just an Ice skill, you will get that 30% damage reduction on your shield. With your remaining points, you've got 4 into Adept Rune Scribing, increases the cooldown recovery of your invocation, and then we have Transcriber of Power, so this means that after you cast it, you gain a buff for 4 seconds that increases your cast speed. We have Flame Rush next here, we actually convert this to Ice, because again that allows us to run the Ice, Fire, Ice combination for our invocation, but we have two points into Fiery Overload, after using Flame Rush you gain Frenzy, so that's additional cast speed, fantastic for applying your dots. Three points into Lunar Protection, gives us ward per second when you're channeling the, the Flame Rush. One point into this node here, which then allows us one point into Snowballing, 
to convert this to cold and again that's all for our invocation and we have one point into Brandon cold as well moving over here we have some survivability so runic eclipse you take less damage during flame rush whopping 18 percent and it's doubled against damage over time as well and then we have celestial guidance so you gain the the buff that was happening here for 45 percent of the duration that you were channeling flame rush we have three points into blazing flux so this increases the cooldown recovery speed on it and the mana efficiency and then three points into solar rush so it increases the range of it and the, the speed that you charge as well the final skill we specialise into here is Ice Barrage and we have it so that Frost Claw will proc this, we don't have to manually cast it. We have 2 points into Biting Cold, 5 points into Nailed Shot so that your shards have a 100% pierce rate. When they pierce as well with this setup here with Hypothermia, they have 200% Frostbite chance. So they're applying 2 stacks of Frostbite every time they pierce and you'll be firing these really often. It's like a, a nice machine gun when they are firing off. Also with this we've got Eternal Winter so it lasts longer the Ice Barrage. We have Challenge of the Elements, you can see that it's increased fire rate against rare enemies and that goes up to a maximum 100% which is amazing. We have Lumen Frost so each Ice Shard released by Ice Barrage deals more damage than the previous one because we've found so many shards we can hit this cap pretty quick here. And then with one point left I put it into Hailstorm which is increasing the fire rate on this skill. So that is everything you need to know for running this awesome Rune Master setup in patch 1.0 for Last Epoch. There are other leveling guides on the channel as well, so if you found this one helpful, then feel free to check out the other ones. If you've got a particular mastery you would like me to have a look at, or a build you would like me to have a look at, then let me know in the comments below. But thanks for tuning in for this one, stay safe, I'll see you all again soon.